What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Brent and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you the best way to ensure that your photography is consistent and repeatable. I am joined today with the lovely Emily and we are so excited to get into today's content. Let's dive right in. So the concept that you will need to know today is called light ratios. And simply put, all light ratios are is the ratio between your key light and your fill light. So for example, as we are doing today, I have my key light at a 45 degree to Emily's left side, and I will be mainly controlling my fill light, which is at a 45 degree to her right, thus showing you light ratios. So the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is set our key light. And our settings in our camera today are going to be ISO 1000, shutter speed 1 2 50th, and our aperture is going to be at f11. The reason why we are shooting at f11 is so that there is no ambient light affecting our image. Think of this as a blank canvas and we are gonna use the light to paint. So I'm going to use my light meter and with my light meter, I'm able to dial in my settings. So I can input that my ISO will be at 100. I will input that my shutter speed is at 1 2 50th and once I get this reading, when I test this light, it will tell me how much my f-stop is at the moment. So let's go ahead and do that now. We're gonna point it in the direction of the light. Go ahead and get a test. And we are firmly sitting at f11. Right now, my power is one to one, so I'm sitting at full power here, can't go up any higher. But we're shooting at f11, so now let's get a test shot and see what that looks like with just the one light on our key side. Okay. All right, so yep, Emily, remember, just stay squared to me. Three, two. And what we're gonna notice on this first shot is that we have heavy shadows on Emily's right side. This right now is no ratio. It's just one key light, we've got it set up, and now that you have it to your liking, we will bring in our fill light and start to talk about the different light ratios. So now that we have our key light set, we wanna go ahead and meter for our fill light. Remember, when you meter lights, you meter them one light at a time. So I'm gonna turn off my key light, go here to my remote and make sure that my A light is turned off. And now we are only metering for our fill. I will once again have my meter set to ISO 100, shutter speed 1 2 50th. I will come here, go ahead and take a test. And again, we are metering at F11. This light is currently also at full power. Can't go any higher. So let's go ahead and take another test shot and see what that looks like. All right. So Emily, again, you're gonna look straight at me. Three, two. Okay, so now with both lights metering at F11, you will now see that Emily is completely lit on both sides, but as we know, light mixes. It's not just gonna stay on the side that you metered it on. So what I like to do is take each of my lights down a third of a stop, just so that I can meter better and more towards F11 as opposed to the lights mixing and it being a little overexposed. So I'm gonna do that now and take another test shot. All right, Emily, straight at me. Three, two. So now we have a much more exposed image. This is gonna be a ton more flattering and it's gonna give you a much better starting point to go from. The lighting this way is not the most cinematic, it's not the coolest and it's not the most fun, but it is very practical. This is something that you can use for e-commerce shoots when you need to show a plethora of different clothing items on your client's website. This can be used for portrait sessions where you might have someone who's a little timid and doesn't necessarily know their good side. This will give you full range to let them move around as much as they would like. Let's move into the next few lighting ratios. So the cool thing about once you've metered your lights is that everything that we're gonna do from now on is gonna be done from our trigger. So we're at our one-to-one -one ratio, which for each of our lights, we are currently set to one half power plus a seventh of a stop on both lights. So both lights are one half power plus a seventh of a stop. What I'm gonna do now is get into two-to-one lighting. All two to one lighting is, is this fill light being one stop under my key. So I'm gonna take this from one half power plus a seventh of a stop, and I'm going to go down to one fourth of a power plus a seventh of a stop for my fill light. So let's go ahead and take a test here and see what we have. All right, Emily, you're gonna be looking straight at me. Three, two. Perfect. 
And with the two to one lighting ratio, this is kind of like your beginner tier, your mid tier. And what this is going to do is allow a little bit of shadow on that right side. So this is where you know, you've know you kind of gotten that client where they have chosen that they have a specific side that they like to shoot at, or you're shooting some commercial work and there's a specific side that you want the eyes to be drawn to. I'm now gonna show you a few examples of when I would use this lighting setup and some work to kind of illustrate what you can do with that soft shadow that you're gonna leave on that right side. Next is gonna be my personal favorite and probably my most used lighting setup. And it's gonna be the four to one lighting setup. And what that is, is our fill light is now going to go two stops under our key. And what this is gonna do, is it's gonna start to bring out even more shadow definition in Emily's right side. But what it's also gonna allow us to do is play around with different poses to cast that shadow and light ratio, how we want to and get a little bit more creative with it. So now I'm gonna come over to my remote. As we remember, our current settings are key light is one half power plus a seventh of a stop. Our fill light is currently at one fourth power plus a seventh of a stop. And I'm going to now take my fill light down to one eighth power plus a seventh of a stop. And we'll go ahead and get that test image. Looking right at me, Emily, good, three, two. Awesome. So now we're really starting to see a good amount of shadow definition on Emily's right side. And with this ratio, I'm also gonna show some examples of work that I've done with this ratio. And what I love about this ratio specifically is that the shadow is not too crazy defined to where your subject or your model is not able to still turn into that fill side light. If you wanted to get like a rim type look, or you could have the model turn into your key light and kind of have some nice shadow effect going on in their hair. So this is one of the most used lighting setups, but this next one, we're gonna get a little more dramatic. Now we will move on to a eight to one lighting ratio and all eight to one is key light stays the same, but our fill light is going to go down to three stops under. So we are currently sitting at one half power plus a seventh of a stop and one eighth power plus a seventh of a stop. So in order to reach our three stops under, we will take our fill light down to one sixteenth power plus a seventh of a stop and we will get another test shot. All right, Emily, looking straight at me. Three, two. And now here we really start to see Emily's right side fall off in the shadow. This is where you're really gonna start to, if the subject is wearing black, that black is gonna start to fall off into the subject's skin tones, depending on how light or dark their skin is. And this is, while not a super used lighting setup, it is something that can be brought in if it's something that you wanna dial in to taste. And for your viewing pleasure, just so you can have an idea and see it, let's check out 16 to one. So we're gonna take our fill light from 1 16th plus a seventh of a stop, and we will take this down to 1 32nd plus a seventh of a stop, and we'll get one last test shot. Emily, looking right at me, three, two. And now <laughs> we're falling all the way off, pretty much into shadow on Emily's right side. Now, all of these lighting setups, while they are very different and all these lighting ratios, they are meant to be dialed to taste. So they are not hard, fast rules. You do not have to go down one complete stop. Let's say you start out at two to one and you think, I might like like a two and a half to one. That's okay. You can go down maybe half a stop and see what you like, okay? Light metering and light ratios are meant to be a starting point. This is not finality and not the end all be all. My hope is that you can come back to this video and continue to practice your lighting ratio so that you can see what does your eye drawn to and what do you like to do more. So that's the quick and dirty with light ratios. I want you to comment down below, which ratio stood out the most to you? Which one do you feel like you're gonna use in your work moving forward? And which one surprised you? Which one did you think maybe coming into this, you didn't really know that you would like, but you were like, wow, I do think there's some use case scenarios for me with that ratio. I wanna thank you all for making it this far in the video and supporting Emily. Where can the people find you? 
Okay, so most active on Instagram, E-M-X-L-Y-Y-G underscore. <laughs> I'm gonna put it down here so that way you guys can spell it. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you all in the next video.